So I'm looking out at all of you and all I see is open intelligence looking back at me. That's pretty amazing. I see people alert and ready for action, ready for beneficial action. I see a group of people that have recognized open intelligence as their identity and are putting it into practice and I just see such stability and ease and potency. Whether you're smiling or looking a little tired or whatever it might be, there's still open intelligence shining brightly within each of us. Open intelligence it's our most comprehensive type of intelligence. Our conventional intelligence is not comprehensive. It's very, it's limited to a definition, a dictionary label. Each datum, each thought, experience, emotion, sensation, person, place, or thing has two aspects. It has its dictionary label, its applied label that we've given to it, the human label, and it has its open intelligence nature. So it has the label and it has its essence. See, most of us have grown up training to only see the label aspect of any of our data. We categorize everything, we see which ones are useful, and then we try to discard other ones that are not useful. And it's a lot of effort to try to maintain this dictionary. And then we're always coming up with new definitions, so the dictionary is always expanding and becoming more complicated. Um, you know, we're trying to memorize all the labels, trying to figure out how do they apply to us. Does this one apply to me? That one applies to them. This is how reality works. And everybody has their own dictionary as well. So you've got how many dictionaries? <laughs> Eight billion dictionaries going around. So that, you can see how that could create a lot of confusion. You know, I just look at my own dictionary, life dictionary, and see how complicated it was getting. It was like the more I learned about everything, the more I had to learn to keep up with all this knowledge. And, you know, that just becomes so limiting because we never have a look at the essence of all these data. What is the essence of every single thought, emotion, experience, sensation that we have? And when we come here, we actually were introduced to the essence of it through a simple practice of short moments of open intelligence repeated many times. It might seem counterintuitive to recognize the essence of data to simply let it be as it is and not try to describe it, not open a dictionary and try to figure out what it is just because that's how we've been doing it for our entire lives. So it sounds counterintuitive to rely on short moments of not describing whatever datum you're experiencing. But just now we can test it out. When we stop thinking just for a moment and stop describing just for the briefest of moments, there is the essence of all data. It's open intelligence imbued within the datum inseparable from the data, like the color blue is inseparable from the sky. You cannot separate the two. Without open intelligence, there would be no data to experience. And the data are how open intelligence is presented. It's lively, dynamic energy. It's essence, you could say. So the comprehensive knowledge is that all data have no nature of their own. They are only open intelligence. And to try to wrap our heads around this, it's complicated to try to think about this and understand it from an intellectual vantage. It can only be really understood through instinctive recognition. So short moments of instinctive recognition of open intelligence, we really recognize that all data have no independent nature. Our thoughts, they have no independent nature. They, they can't be found, they can't be isolated, they can't be put into a microscope, they can't be analyzed in any other way other than thinking about them. So, keep it really simple. When thoughts are proliferating, 
Remember the instruction, short moments of not describing, allowing descriptions to be as they are. And that's a very powerful instruction. We can do that every day, whenever we naturally remember to do so. We're not making it into an effortful practice. We're constantly saying, oh, I must rely on short moments of not describing, not describing, not describing. How will I know how to make the next decision if I'm not describing? And, you know, that would be one way of looking at it. We go about our day making spontaneous decisions anyway, whether we're thinking about it or not. You know, we're just automatically on the move. And then sometimes we pause and think, oh, should I think about this and make this decision or that decision. But all the while, open intelligence is making the decision. There is no separate individual making the decision. Nobody that can be found to be making the decision. Science cannot prove the location of a personal identity either. So that's good news. You don't have an identity that you need to fix, improve, change, rearrange. You get to be you as you are. You are open intelligence, shining forth all data, inseparable from open intelligence itself. And when we hang out in the communities, when we participate in trainings, when we rely on a trainer, this becomes so obvious and evident that it never becomes a question any longer. At some point for me, I just stopped thinking about the whole meaning of reality. It just didn't come up anymore. I spend a, li a lifetime thinking about the nature of reality and then I don't think about it anymore. Through short moments, through participating in the trainings, through relying on the trainer, and through participating with the community. Another thing that I can really see played a huge role in my life was trying to fit in and trying to figure out how I fit in. You know, we, we easily see how cliques form, how groups form, based on data association. I like the data that they have, or at least some of the data that they have, so I'm going to associate with them. And then we kind of band together and do things that we like to do together. And uh, what I saw growing up, well, there was a few cliques in my school, and there were, it was based around music and the things people like to do, it was like there was the rockers, the stoners, the break dancers, the jocks. <laughs> it was like there were so many groups and I would kind of fit into one group, but then I would think, well, I like what they're doing. Can I fit into that group? And then they wouldn't have me in that group because I was a whatever, whatever group I was in. And it was just so silly and painful and ridiculous. And I, I started to see that Everybody shared so many similar qualities that I could have the exact same qualities and interests as somebody in a totally different group than me. And it didn't make any sense to cut off, isolate, and go off on our own. But increasingly that's how it became because of the datum of anger, frustration, resentment, feeling excluded. And when we focus on those, then we really do isolate ourselves and we nurture these datum of hatred, resentment further. And then it just gets to the point where it's unmanageable and then we all know what can happen then. So what I see in, in the communities in Balance View around the world is people from all different groups, they have all different kinds of interests, and we're able to, to be together without collapsing into hatred Things, um, resentment, contempt, and we're not latching on to all of the things we like about the other people either. You know, it's all of the data is left to be wide open, seeing it as the beneficial display of open intelligence, regardless of our dictionary label. And that really, it makes it easy and effortless to be together. We start to recognize in other people their inherent gift strengths and talents. It's hard to actually look at a person and then only see their, their data. You know, all we see after practicing short moments is 
open intelligence benefit in another person, whether they recognize it or not. So we see that it's our responsibility to remember the instruction, to allow descriptions to be as they are, relax the need to go into the description and make anything out of it, and find that our potency and availability is right then and there. Whether we like the person and their data or not, we don't have to accept their data, we don't have to reject them, we don't have to do anything about it other than rely on open intelligence that is informing our open-heartedness, our skillfulness, our discernment. This is how we become very smart and capable to actually live on this planet together and to go beyond all conventional forms of knowledge. So it's also important to see there's nothing wrong with experiencing this hatred towards another person. I mean, that's just a natural data stream for so many people due to the belief and the independent nature of data. We've been training that way up since an early age, so it's very natural that we're going to experience the whole array of positive, negative, and neutral thoughts, reactions, descriptions. So, day by day we practice when we feel hatred towards another person, and we feel closed off, or we don't want to share with them. It, we simply just do not emphasize that, and we seek support the support that brings us back to open intelligence, rather than collapsing into the data stream. Seeking support for a clear pathway, you could say, or a, just, it opens up the field where you just, you see clearly what is going on. Aha, I'm just emphasizing data, that is all that is ever going on. And then when we recognize that, we rely on open intelligence, it's impossible to collapse back into that datum again every time until at one point we never collapse in data again. <clears throat> so sometimes the afflictions, well in the beginning the afflictions it's really hard to see them as the shining forth of open intelligence. How can an affliction have that essence about it. It has to have some kind of nature of its own. It doesn't feel good. It keeps coming up and distracting me. It's ruining everything. How does it have it, a beneficial essence? It doesn't make any sense. Well, again, don't think about it in that way. We allow the affliction to be as it is. If we need support, we have that support available. If it's challenging to rely on short moments of not describing, then we can talk to a trainer who has been through that affliction and knows what it means to allow it to be as it is, to extract its beneficial potency. So it's not in running away from the affliction or avoiding it or indulging it, it's in allowing it to be as it is to see there is no independent nature of that afflictive data as well. So that the resolution simply means that it it no longer is taken to have an independent nature, some kind of power over us to affect our sense of flourishing and life satisfaction or in hindering us to engage in our gifts, strengths, and talents. A good metaphor for resolution or outshining would be the planets and stars in the sky. When the sun rises, the planets and stars are no longer visible, yet they're still there but they're just inseparable from the space, from the light and space. So too, all data are outshone through our practice of open intelligence. When we stop emphasizing them, they just, their dictionary labels fade into the background, and all that is seen is their brilliant shine. And it's, it's just a matter of practice. If we wanted to learned to play the guitar, and we'd never played it before, and we thought that, well, if I just look at the guitar, I'll know how to play it. That usually doesn't work that way. When I learned how to play the guitar, I had to pick it up, listen to other people playing guitar, uh, get some books on how to play guitar, listen to guitar, and then actually short moments of practicing, putting my fingers on the frets and 
trying to figure out that out and getting used to it and getting the rhythm of the rhythm hand and but it was every day practice 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 and then training up open intelligence it is practice but it's it's important to remember it's an effortless means of practice the only effort is to show up and commit to testing out short moments of allowing data descriptions to be as they are like right now what is the most effortless thing you can do right now that's just the stop thinking <laughs> right it isn't in running jumping breathing kicking screaming thinking uh, that's effort but what is effortless like what can you do right now that is effortless and I see many of you smiling and you actually start to see this is my mode of operation on a day-to-day -day basis this effortlessness becomes more my mode of operation where I'm not thinking about everything 24 7 and trying to figure everything out and even if I am trying to figure everything out there's more and more of this effortlessness so remember that short moments of effortlessness even if it's in a really challenging circumstance you have the ability to just okay short moments of effortlessness in the midst of this whether you're playing mat caught on the beach and you're trying to beat your record of however many volleys you have or if you're playing music and you can't work out that next bit and you start to get a bit frustrated right there you remember short moments of effortlessness and then the next indicated move is is there for us <clears throat> so this whole time I've been sitting here I hardly focus on my body <laughs> it's just doing its thing it's I'm kind of hot right now I'm sweating and shifting around in my chair but I'm not even pondering what is my body right now if you have a look throughout your day the only thing that is really going on is your inexhaustible open intelligence so we really keep it simple you know no need to figure out well this is my body how can this be my body the instinctive recognition of this is our body inexhaustibly expansive and the mind and the body these two are the labels the dictionary labels everybody has a different idea of what the body and the mind is but in those short moments of effortlessness there's there's uh, no debate there's absolutely no debate nothing that can be proved defended So therein lies your power to be of great benefit to yourself and to everyone, to all beings, all universes, all worlds, inseparable from your power to know. <clears throat>